All right, here we go. I've been waiting since 2020 for this show. But you know what? This will probably be crap just like Mando Season 3. It's probably just going to be another poorly pieced together piece of corporate Disney garbage that will break our hearts. Wait a minute. What is this? This is good? Are these characters actually interesting? Am I enjoying this? No. No, I am not. Alright, see, so here's that Disney schlop writing that I expected. I'll just prepare myself now because I'm sure the rest of the show will be this type of mediocre- Let's fucking go! That's my dog right there! Yo! Yo! That's so sick! What the hell? Woo! So, the Ahsoka show is interesting. It's not bad, but it's also not great either. Personally, I stopped watching trailers for this show after the first one because one, I wanted to go in with a fresh eye, and two, I didn't care. I'm sorry, but every time there's a new Star Wars announcement, I don't even flinch anymore. To me, Star Wars has become like drinking alcohol. I'm not going out of my way to get a hazy IPA, but if there's a cold one right in front of me, I'm up for a good time. And if there's too much of it in front of me, I start to get nauseous and highly irritable. Luckily, the Ahsoka show turned out to be the Lagunitas of Star Wars. Okay, I'm gonna stop using this analogy now. Basically, I thought Ahsoka was good. It's definitely got its flaws, but this would actually be something I would consider rewatching in the future. Right off the bat, this is how you start a fucking show. After this interaction, I was in. And after I saw Shin, I was in. Deeper. <laughs> Fuck. Like, come on, man. Balin is straight savage for this. You're right about one thing, Captain. We are no Jedi. <laughs> he and Shin have become my favorite characters in this show. But I'll talk about them in a sec because let's talk about Ahsoka first. As expected, Rosario Dawson is doing a pretty good job with the character, although she makes this face and crosses her arms like a lot. Not entirely a bad thing, but it feels like an NPC idle expression whenever something happens. But she definitely feels like an older, wiser, and perhaps even more tired version of the Ahsoka we knew in Clone Wars, while still being able to wield those lightsabers like a badass. I think her arc of learning what it means to be a master is very fitting for her. I do wish there was a little more to it though. We see the standard stuff of her and Sabine not getting along, but then she has a vision with Anakin, and suddenly she's got a force bond with her? The arc feels a bit unfinished during this season, but I assume we'll go deeper into Ahsoka's embrace of being a master in season 2, so I'm cool with it for now. And honestly, that's really all I have to say about Ahsoka, which is weird considering it's her show. I guess it's because there's not really a whole lot of depth to her character. Well, there could be, but it's overshadowed by the main plot most of the time like her fear of turning out to be just like Anakin. This is a really cool concept, but we barely get any time to feel it because we're rushing into yet another predictable battle. There is inner conflict within her, yes, but we never get to fully dwell on it for it to have any lasting impact. In the running for best character in this show, it sucks to say that Ahsoka isn't even in the top three, which in my opinion consists of Thrawn, Shin, and Hu Yang, baby! No, I'm just kidding, it's Balin. But seriously, Hu Yang is a solid number four. Not only is he wise, well-written, and actually funny, he brings the fucking smoke! <laughs> Balin and Shin are by far the most interesting characters in this show. They're mysterious, they're badass, and the actors playing them are actually the best in the show. Like, I look at Sabine, and I'm borderline cringing. But then I look at Shin, and I'm in love. But honestly, Shin's character is not an easy one to play, and Irvana freaking kills it. She makes me believe that Shin could be a real person in the Star Wars universe. Natasha makes me believe I could run into Sabine at Galaxy's Edge to snap a selfie with. And on top of that, Shin knows how to use a fucking lightsaber. She just looks like she knows what she's doing, while some other characters, not so much. Trust me, I got a lot to say about the lightsaber duels in this show, but I'll get there. Shin and Balin have so much potential to become legendary characters because there's so much mystery surrounding them. Balin with his obscure plans to end the cycle and Shin's search for her own destiny. I just need to know more about where these two are heading and I'm a bit disappointed they were non-existent in the season finale. I'm even more disappointed that they'll have to recast Balin in season 2 due to Ray Stevenson's unfortunate passing. Whoever they pick is going to have some big shoes to fill because Ray's portrayal of the character was perfect from his line delivery to his distinct lightsaber form. I just hope Dave doesn't botch these characters, especially Shin because I could definitely see her just joining the gang by being the bad guy turned good. Although overall, I'm just glad they don't have brainless inquisitors as bad guys anymore. And I do believe in Filoni because there is one thing he did get right. 
Thrawn. Rain hellfire upon them. There'll be no negotiating with the apprentice of Anakin Skywalker. Man, Thrawn is so cool. The concept of him being stranded with his fleet is so interesting. Speaking of which, these night troopers look so sick. Like damn, they almost look like they could be competent soldiers. Almost. Thrawn is rightfully portrayed as the mastermind tactician that he is, except for one mistake. One mistake that seemed completely out of character for him. Letting Sabine live. There is absolutely no reason not to kill Sabine on sight right here. Letting her go to find Ezra is stupid. He just created another loose end to worry about. If Thrawn really wanted to find Ezra and kill him, I'm sure he could. It's not like the fool was hiding that well considering Sabine found him in less than an hour. So what's the point of letting Sabine go and find him? To kill them both in one swoop? Because you didn't even do that. Ezra was never even a threat to begin with. Here's what Thrawn should have done. He should have killed Sabine, dealt with Ahsoka when she arrived using Balin and his apprentice, and fucking dipped leaving Ahsoka and Ezra trapped in this galaxy forever. I understand that Thrawn values all life, and it's not like him to just kill some girl on sight. But he's been banished in this galaxy for 11 years. After 11 years, I'd kill Sabine five times just to get home. At that point, nothing else matters anymore. I mean, if you're not gonna kill her, at least imprison her to use as leverage when Ahsoka arrives. I get that Thrawn achieved his goal in the end, and you'll probably say, it was all part of his master plan all along, but no dude. It was just plot armor to have our heroes reunite again. Look at Thrawn's face. This was not part of his master plan. And speaking of plot armor, they should have died here. No way anyone could survive an artillery barrage from a Star Destroyer at this range. I love how Thrawn is also baffled by their plot armor like you serious? No, but overall, Thrawn is actually a good character and I'm very excited to see more of him in live action. I just wish I could say the same about Sabine. Goddamn, Sabine is so trash in this show. Everyone I've discussed this show with doesn't like Sabine. She's undoubtedly the worst character. And I know I'm gonna piss some people off by saying that. Although one positive thing about her is that she's pretty true to her character from Rebels, in the sense that she's still annoying as hell. She's annoying because frankly, she acts like a brat. And I know that sounds kind of mean, but hear me out. Sabine never had any real depth in Rebels because she never acted like a real person, and that's no different in this show. In Rebels, she kind of gets a pass for acting like a brat because she's basically a teenager. But the problem is that she still acts like this 10 years later. She is 29 years old in this show and acts like a child. You would think that someone who's gone through so much trauma in her life would be a little more real and relatable, but that isn't the case here. This makes her feel almost useless. I say almost because her motivation to find Ezra is actually interesting here. This interaction with Balin is built up nicely and it carries the story fairly well. But again, Sabine should have died here. Realistically, there's no reason she should be alive past this episode. Cause Balin, or even better Shin, could have just killed her here, taken the map, and been on their way. Again, no reason to keep her alive. And I'm not just saying kill her because I dislike the character. I genuinely think the story could have been better if Sabine had died, or at least put in a coma and taken out the rest of the show. Think about what that would have done to Ahsoka. Think about what that would do to Shin if she's the one that killed her. It would have added so much to both of their characters. Every time Sabine was on screen, I was bored. And again, you compare her to Shin, and it's just night and day. Shin acts like a real person. Sabine acts like she's on Disney Channel. And the worst part is, to top it all off, she can use the fucking force. The whole time I was watching this show, I was like, okay, Sabine kind of sucks, but she'll find a way to overcome her challenges without the force. But guess what? She can use the force like it's nothing. I just, why does Disney want everyone to use the force? It's like everyone can use the force now. And if you're a kid in the Star Wars universe, congratulations, you're force sensitive. Training? Nah, you don't need that shit. Just believe in yourself and you got this. So not only is Sabine Mandalorian royalty, an ex-bounty hunter, artist for some reason, expert combatant, and a rebel hero, but now she can use the force like a pro. At this point, you might as well just make her a descendant of Palpatine, you dumb fuck. Thankfully, the other characters aren't too bad. Hera is... fine. Not a whole lot going on there, but she's not terrible by any means. Surprisingly, Ezra is not as bad as I thought it would be. 
It's no secret that I don't like his character. In Rebels, he's mostly an annoying little fuck, but he's actually very digestible in this show. And nice to look at too. Like, goddamn, no wonder Sabine was so obsessed with finding this man. But I think he's actually enjoyable to watch in this show because he's not the main character anymore. Ezra works best as a supporting character or the dumb comic relief guy. That's all he'll ever be good for. I do like the scene where he builds his lightsaber to resemble Kanan's. In fact, the whole interaction between Hu Yang and Ezra is probably one of the best parts in the show. Though we all know what the actual best part of the show is. Look man, I'm the biggest advocate for Star Wars to be wholly original and separate from the Skywalker saga. But this man brings me a nostalgia joy that I can't get enough of. Seeing Anakin in his Clone Wars uniform was truly something else. This scene also made me realize the reality of using child soldiers during the Clone Wars. Look at how young Ahsoka is. It's kind of fucked up. Honestly, this episode was so good, I wish the whole show could have just been about Ahsoka's lone journey with Anakin's Force Ghost. I would have loved more conversation between them regarding the Empire, Vader, Obi-Wan, or even Luke. Nonetheless, this episode was still the best for me because of how interesting it all is. Anakin's Force Ghost, the world between worlds, these are amazing concepts that I need to see more of. Not to mention the most surprising part of the whole show, lightsaber combat. Everyone knows I think the new era of lightsaber duels suck. Not only do the new duels look terrible, but there's hardly any emotional influence behind them. That being said, the duels in Ahsoka are a big step in the right direction. Yeah, there are some moments where the actors are waiting to be hit, but I gotta say the choreography and camera work looks a lot better in some of these fights. Even the actors look like they've trained more for this. Well, maybe not all of them. Obviously, Hayden can still swing the saber like a Jedi Master, and he looks better than Rosario at times, but that actually lends to the story of them being Master and Apprentice. I'm also so glad that the characters have distinct lightsaber styles in this show. Ahsoka with her dual wielding, Balin with his two-handed grip, and Sabine's erratic flailing. Even Morgan looked pretty damn good in this final fight. Actually, she looked really good, especially during this long wide shot. I also love the standoffs in this show. This is a trend that I definitely want to see continued in Star Wars media. Though despite the improved duels, a big problem I have with the new Star Wars is the lightsabers themselves. Just please, for the love of George Lucas, let me see some severed limbs. I am so sick and tired of this grazing the skin and killing shit. It's like I'm constantly being edged and it's frustrating as hell. We all know what a lightsaber does. Kids know what a lightsaber does. We've seen the prequels. We saw what happened to Maul and Jango. What is the reason to censor lightsaber strikes? How kid friendly do you really have to be? I just want to see heads on the floor, man. Yeah, we got this shot, but it barely counts. And while we're still on lightsabers, can I just say I am so sick of the filler battles. Someone tell me, what is the actual point of having our main characters fight off goons? There are never any stakes because no one ever dies, and most of the time, the choreography is shit and it's not even fun to watch. If you're gonna have your main heroes take on a squad of weaker enemies, either one, make it look like a phenomenal difference in power through good choreography and camera work, like they did in Kingsman or The Force Unleashed. Like, look at this. compared to this. Or two, give me actual stakes to be invested in, because without anything to lose, these scenes become lifeless. It's like in a video game, where you're walking along and suddenly you're jumped by low level enemies that you easily take out. After a while, it just becomes redundant. Furthermore, stop making stormtroopers useless. If you're gonna make them look this cool, make them actually capable of fighting. Because, come on, look at this. I mean, bro, I can't, I can't fucking hit him! It's impossible! In the end, this show isn't the worst Star Wars Disney has put out, but it still suffers from a lot of the typical Disney issues. I think the biggest problems in this show are the same problems I had in Rebels. It's just boring sometimes. Even listening to our main characters talk is just so unentertaining. Hold on, I'm about to say something that may get me a lot of hate, but Dave Filoni's writing isn't actually that great. Why are you pulling me? I'm right. He's skilled at crafting stories, but the way he writes dialogue is just not good. 
a lot of the characters talk the same. In fact, you could probably switch lines with most of our main heroes and it would sound exactly the same. It's that mundane. Don't worry about me. I'm not. Good. Should I be? What? Worried. Nope. This is also in part due to the directing, but at the end of the day, these conversations are just dull, and I'll probably skip them if I ever decide to rewatch this because they hardly ever add anything to the story. Speaking of which, the actual story is so shallow. I'm never on the edge of my seat because I almost always know what's going to happen. In this case, it's either Thrawn gets away, which is what I predicted since episode 4, or he doesn't. I know they're gonna find Ezra. I know they're gonna have some mediocre battles at the end. I know no one is going to be remotely close to losing anything of real value. Even at the end, while Ahsoka and Sabine are stranded, no one is even tripping. There is no changed emotion coming from the characters at all. Ahsoka really just be like, well this ain't my problem anymore. Everything is just chill as if there weren't any stakes to begin with, because really, there wasn't. This is why Balin and Shin are the best characters because I don't know what's going to happen next with them. Let's wrap this up by bringing out the rad or bad meter. Check it out, I changed the colors for Ahsoka. Between rad and bad, this show is pretty alright, which can be converted to, I don't know, a 6 or something. Star Wars is certainly moving in the right direction with this show, but it still won't be jumping for joy when new stuff is announced. But on a more positive note, I would like to thank you all for 10,000 subscribers. I honestly don't know how to comprehend that insane number, but I am beyond honored. Stay tuned for more videos to come, both Star Wars and non-Star Wars related, and as I always say, thank you very much for watching this video. I'll catch you next time.